and I'm back and it's been about a week since we've had a video which might not seem strange but the observant amongst you will have noticed that ever since Christmas I've had at least two videos a week out but I just needed a little bit of a break so I've had the past seven days just not recording do no YouTube stuff still been pottering about I've got some more seeds on the go stuff like that but I just needed a little bit of break away from filming stuff but I'm back and we're back with a bit of a bang with a job to do and we've got some first early potatoes. There they are there, chitting away in the air box. And these are Pentland Javelin. You can see the label there. I bought these on a little bit of a whim from B&M a good few weeks ago. I had no intention of doing Pentland Javelin this year. As you know, I nearly always get all my seed potatoes from a company called Potato House. But I thought, you know what, we'll have a little bit of a, a little bit of a try. We'll try something. Let me show you these here. And they're chitting away really, really nice. They're looking pretty healthy. So why not go extra early? Let's push our luck and see just how early we can get some potatoes on the go. And one of the benefits of doing YouTube is, is I can look back over the past few years and see when I've done things. Now, normally, my first early is at least another two or three weeks on. But we're going to go super early and see if we can get some of these on the go and get a crop in about three months time. So if that all works out, we're maybe looking around about the second week in June to be getting some first earlies. And that's possibly the earliest I've ever had potatoes, especially here in Scotland where things are just a little bit cold. But we've got some stuff, you can probably maybe see over here, we've got some stuff to get these on the go with. I'll show you how I'm gonna do them. We'll get set up and we'll be back with you in just a jiffy. So, ready to go. And first of all, you'll have to excuse just a little bit of messy. I've got a bit of a project going on the go here, but that's a story for another day. So you'll have to make do with it for now, but I'll come to that. So what have we got here? 30 litre bucket. I use the same buckets every year. And this is spent potato compost. There would have been potatoes grown in this particular compost last year. And I just reuse the compost every single year. Nothing much to it. It's a little bit where it's been outside. It has been, it's kind of been half undercover, half an hour. It's, it'll do. It'll be all right for the potatoes. So I pretty much do it in the same way every year. And it couldn't be any more simpler. The only thing I'm going to do is because we're so early this year and there is a risk of frost at the moment. I mean, I have looked at the weather forecast. Next sort of two weeks, it doesn't look too bad. It's overcast at the minute. We have had a few days, you know, back last week where we had nice sunshine. There's the cat running past. Some lovely sunshine and the temperatures dropped right down overnight. So we were down to sort of minus one, minus two. There was frost and all sorts of stuff. Not great for the potatoes because we don't want them to freeze. But I will give them a little bit of TLC. So like I say, I'm going to follow the normal routine. But we will do just a little bit differently towards, towards the end and how we're going to look after them. So I'm just going to fill one of these buckets up. Probably about, I don't know, how much am I putting in there? One, two, three, three to four-ish double handfuls in the bottom there. And once that's in the bottom of the bucket there, we'll get our first thing here. And this is a specific potato and vegetable fertilizer from Vitax. And I use this every year and it's really good. And I kid you not, honestly, it stinks to high heaven. It is like the most concentrated manure in a box you could ever imagine. It is honking. And if you buy some of it, I just get this from the local garden centre. Just be aware, when you open up the tab, the box is absolutely jam-packed. So you open it up and it nearly always just comes spilling out like that. So you just need to be a little bit careful. Now, how much am I putting in? A, a good sprinkle. There's maybe, because like I say, there's a problem with the boxes with them, that it just comes pouring out. There's maybe a handful there and I'm just going to mix that in to the bottom layer there. And this is the very bottom. So obviously the reason I'm putting all the, the feed in the bottom is that's where the roots from the potatoes are gonna go. And I'm just gonna put in again, handful, half a handful to three quarters of a handful-ish of the fish blood and bone. I'll get it mixed in. Now normally in the buckets, I would probably just normally do three seed potatoes. I find that's just about right but I've got eight seed potatoes. So I don't want to do two buckets of three, one bucket of two, or two buckets of three and throw two of them away. So I'm gonna go four on each bucket. We're gonna, we're gonna braise it out. So we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. Like I say, if we're going early, why not go all out and we'll get four on each as well. 
and this is just going to be a little bit tricky with the gloves and in the first this first layer here i'm just going to put two of them in and i'm going to put them in to, i should have you know what i should have done i should have lined them up with the handles let me let me just turn the, turn the bucket slightly right i'm going to line my seed potatoes up next to the handles and i'll just show you that two ticks let me come over and show you what i've done right hopefully you can see it in there and I'm going to try and do it without tipping the compost. So we've got one here and one there. And that's important that we're doing it that way. And I'll come to that in just a second. So more compost. Let's fire it in there. And I'm going to cover those seed potatoes up. And I'm maybe just going to make sure there's a good two to three inches on the top there of that. All right, next up, more of our absolutely stinking potato specific fertilizer fish blood and bone in it goes a little bit more about the same again mix it up and why am i putting it in this layer because this is where the next two seed potatoes are going to go so we've got one at the handles so if we've got them at 12 and 6 on the clock i'm going to go in with the next two and we're going to do them kind of east and west if that's north and south i'm going to do them at three and nine if that's 12 and 6. Let's just pop it in. I'm trying. It's difficult with my gloves. See there? Honestly, they're tiny little seed potatoes and I'm trying to be dead gentle with them. But it's difficult getting them out of the egg container. So my gloves on. I've got my gloves on because the compost sweat and that stuff stinks. But here I go. I'll show you that again. Hopefully again. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. Oh, one of them's moved. Let me just push that in. There we go. That's better. So we've got them at you say three and nine there we put them in and it really is as simple as firing all the compost back on top so i'll fill that up in the top i'll come back in a jiffy and i'll show you where i'm going to keep them how i'm going to keep them just to ward that frost stuff for another few weeks so one quick thing to tell you is just on the top of the potato bucket so hopefully you can see it there i've put a bit of a bit of a mulch and it's this stuff here let me grab this bag here this stuff here, blooming amazing it's called, and it's a sort of organic soil and richer strulch sort of thing. The only thing that's going to do is add another layer of insulation on top of the buckets there. It's going to help manage the moisture. It's a bit wet at the moment, so I've been using those bags to waste stuff down over here. So they've been out in the wind and the rain and whatnot, so they're a bit wet, they're a bit heavy. It'll dry out nicely, and speaking of things that are wet, I mentioned before the compost was wet, and it is... So I've not watered these potatoes yet, and I probably won't do for a little while. We'll see. I'll, I'll keep an eye on them, though, how they're going, because where they're going to go and live is inside here. So I'm going to move them inside the greenhouse, and we're just going to pop them over the side there, and that's going to keep the frost off them. It's going to keep them nice and warm. I've got a little temperature monitor in there, a little temperature gauge that's going to keep an eye on them. Now, I reckon they'll last about a week in there, before I get sick and tired of kicking them and they'll end up up at the polytunnel. But that's okay. The only other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this. Let me grab this. This is a big old massive bit of agricultural fleece and you can see it's a bit dirty. I've used it for years and years and years and years. And again, I'm gonna cover the buckets over with this. So let's just head into the, the greenhouse here and we'll pop them on. And again, if there's any risk of frost or anything like that, that's just going to help protect them, help keep any sort of really, really, really cold away from them, keep on top of them, keep an eye on them. But we'll say, please, please do come back in June. I mean, I reckon, like I said earlier, on about the second week in June, we'll maybe be having the earliest potatoes we've ever had. And it couldn't be simpler. Buckets that I've used for the last three years. The same compost that I've used for the last three years. Bit of nutrition in it, stinking potato fertilizer, fish blood and bone, mix it in, chuck your seed potatoes. I've gone for four a bucket, normally only go three. We've gone four because I had eight. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, folks.